Assalamu alaikum. Today I'm talking about the nerve impulse and I decided to make a stop motion video about that so I guess it makes things better, easier to understand. So here we go. As we can see here, uh, this is the, the neuron or the nerve cell. Uh, we have the cell body which is called also the Saturn and we have the axon. Um, and as we can see there are negative ions and positive ions and the negative ions are inside the axon while the positive ions are outside the axon and the membrane of the axon is actually permeable for some ions and impermeable for another ions first the nerve cell at rest in the inside of the axon we got negative ions like negative chlorine ions and proteins which are large molecules and these accumulate on the inside while on the outside we got positive sodium ions and positive potassium ions but as we can see that potassium is found in the, is put in the inside while there aren't any positive ions on the inside well what happens here is that sodium is concentrated in the on the outside from 10 to 15 times more than the inside while potassium is concentrated 30 times in the inside more than the outside so here is what happens the membrane of the axon is actually permeable for potassium 40 times more than sodium and that's why the potassium all the potassium which is found in the inside goes outside while uh, the sodium uh, remains outside because uh, the membrane is kind of impermeable to sodium so that it cannot enter inside the axon. So the uh, membrane of the axon at that previous situation is said to be polarized. And uh, the presence of positive ions on the outside and negative ions in the inside leads to the presence of a potential difference between the positive and negative ions. And this potential difference is negative 70 millivolts. The name of this potential difference at that case is the resting potential course because it's related to the resting position of the axon. Second, changes on the stimulation of the nerve cell. Okay, so the nerve impulse begins to enter the cell from the cell body through the dendrites and then it begins to enter the axon. So when it reaches the axon, the permeability of the membrane begins to change. So su suddenly, the membrane becomes permeable for sodium and impermeable for potassium. And this will lead to the accumulation of positive charges on the inside. And uh, there will be negative, uh, more negative charges on the outside than the inside because the amount of sodium on the outside is not sufficient enough to make positive the most um, found ions on the outside. So the negative sign become revealed on the outside and the positive sign becomes revealed in the inside. So things change in here. Now the axon's membrane is said to be de depolarized. And again, the presence of uh, now negative charges on the outside and positive charges in the inside, the opposite of what was going on. So uh, this leads to the presence of a potential difference between positive and negative charges. But since the distribution of ions changes here, also the potential difference changes. So the potential difference becomes positive 40 millivolts 
and the potential difference in this case is called the depolarization potential. Third, propagation of the nerve impulse through the nerve. After that, the nerve impulse moves from one portion of the axon to another portion um, leading to the same change that happened in the previous portion. Four, the repolarization phase. After uh, the uh, nerve impulse moves away from the axon, the axon begins to um, regain its normal physiological properties so the membrane gains its normal permeability, so it begins to be permeable for potassium again and impermeable for sodium, and this leads to the accumulation of negative ions on the inside and positive ions on the outside, as it was before the arrival of the nerve impulse. And this period of regaining the uh, physiological property is called the refractory period. And it takes from 0.001 seconds to 0.003 seconds. And during this period, the uh, axon will not respond to any nerve impulse, whatever its strength was, uh, because it's regaining its physiological properties in order to be able to respond to the new nerve impulses that will uh, arrive to the axon. Now, the membrane of the axon is said to be repolarized because it returns back to the original state where the positive ions accumulate on the outside and the negative ions in the inside and this leads to the returning of the original potential difference which is the resting potential that equals negative 70 millivolts now we can notice that on stimulation uh, that negative 70 millivolts changed into positive 40 when the membrane became depolarized on the stimulation. So here we can notice that positive 110 millivolts were, were added to the negative 70 millivolts in order to give that positive 40 millivolts on depolarization. So that 110 millivolts is also a potential difference and it's called the action potential. So the action potential is the response of the nerve cell to the nerve impulse or to the stimulation. So when the nerve cell is resting and an impulse arrives, the action potential occurs leading to the increase of the potential difference from negative 70 millivolts to positive 40 millivolts and that's what the action potential is. Now we have some notes about the nerve impulse. For example, the speed of the nerve impulse varies from one axon to another. So when the axon is myelinated or it's covered in myelin sheath, the myelin sheath acts as an insulator so that it protects the nerve impulse from scattering away and so it just becomes unidirectional and this gives it great speed that may reach to 140 meters per second while if the axon is non-myelinated when the nerve impulse flows through it can be scattered and so its speed becomes very low so that it may be 12 meters per second also, we have to know that the neuron or the nerve cell follows the rule or the law which is called the all or none law, which means that um, when the nerve impulse arrives, the neuron will give its maximum response or no response. This depends on the strength of the um, nerve impulse. So if the nerve impulse is strong enough to stimulate the nerve to react, so it will give its maximum response. And if the nerve impulse is not sufficient enough to stimulate it, it will not respond at all. 
so there is no weak response. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check the other videos on my website www.eduforfree.net.